All right. Welcome to another Ping Castle Bowl of Linux Soup. Today's item on the menu is Slackware. More specifically, Slack Builds. I'm going to teach you how to use Slack Builds with Slackware. Uh, the Slackware standard repos are pretty small, but we have access to Slack Builds which is, if you're familiar with Arch, it's kind of like the AUR. So, get this full screen here, launch my Firefox. We're going to go to slackbuilds.org and 13.37 is my version of Slack, where you want to select your own. 13.37 is the latest. So, what's something, um... And let's say I want LX panel. So we search for that. We go to LX panel, and here we have what it requires and our slack build. We can download a .tar.gz which is what we'll be doing, but we need LX menu dash data and menu dash catch. So go ahead and download this. And we need LX menu dash data and menu dash catch. So LX menu dash data. Does this require anything? Well, it's needed for LX panel and LX launcher, but it doesn't look like it has any other dependencies. So we'll download this. And menu dash catch, I think, was the last one we needed. And you can just go ahead and download that. Save. Okay. Open up a, c a command prompt. SU to root. Go to your directory. Right. Let me go into downloads first. Go ahead and move uh, all this leftover crud to tilde slash. Oops. That's right. I am no longer pingcast, so it's tilde no longer stands for my home directory. I'm just going to move all this leftover junk to my pictures folder. Uh, since I no longer need all that stuff, I already got my look going. Okay, so... Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and move all the Slack builds to the root home directory. So we have our Slack build. You'll want some sort of build directory. So I'll just mkdir slash temp uh, slash build, and we can move everything in the current directory to slash temp slash build. All right. So we need to untar these three things, so I'll tar dash xvzf dot slash asterisk. Um, asterisk should do fine, I just want to make sure the asterisk fires at everything only in the current directory, just out of paranoia. And that should do it. Hmm. Maybe a for statement. There we go. Okay. So, we'll go into 
Alex menu dash data first. Um, we need to first make the select build executable. So shamod plus x Alex menu dash data dot select build. Now might want to read at might want to view the readme. So let's readme, and it'll just tell you about it. Uh, less slack dash desc. I think you need to download the source code. I just can't remember. Yes, you do. Less lx. Now you know I'm going to use them. Let's menu dash data dot info because I'm going to uh, see if I can copy this. No, it's not going to agree with me anyways. Okay, here's one thing about Vim. Colon, exclamation point, while I'm going to execute a shell command, I'm going to wget http colon slash slash downloads dot sourceforge dot net slash lxde slash lxmenu dash data dash zero point one point two dot tar dot gz. And I'm not sure if I got that. Oh no, we got a 404 not found. Let me give that another go. So now we're getting this, we've downloaded it, we've got our source code dot slash lxmenu dash data dot slack build. And it's just going to build the package for us into a dot tgz which is what slackware uses. But there's a more there's a tool that will automate it for us, sort of like uh, Yower would automate the AUR, and we could select package. Where'd it go? I think it goes in directory outside. Hmm. Oh, went to slash temp. Slash package install lx menu. And then we could do this two more times with those packages. Or remove this. Or we could use a tool called SBO PKG and it will automate the process, but it's good to know how to manually do it. So Open up your web browser, search for SBO PKG. We go to sbopkg.org. We go to downloads. And we can download the package here. Save it. And if I go to my downloads folder, Install package SBOPKG. This will install it. Then type in SBOPKG, and it's going to ask us ask us if it wants to create some directories. Uh, let me clear out the build directory first. these files and then we're going to sync with the active repository and this will allow us to use SBOPKG and we can it can automate the installation of packages from 
Slack builds. We don't have to worry about downloading source code and making the Slack build executable. It'll do this all for us. And you can also set up a build queue so that we you could just have a whole list of the package so you can get the dependencies installed first and you can install that package. But I recommend looking at Slack builds first and doing as I did earlier, search through the different packages, make sure you know what you need, otherwise it'll complain when you try to install it and it won't install the package, it wouldn't install it. It won't install LX panel if we don't have the dependency satisfied. Alright, our sync is complete. Exit. So, let's search for some packages. Uh, what did we need? We need LX menu dash data. Uh, I'm going to add that to the queue. I'm going to go back. And I think I need menu dash catch. So, menu dash catch. Add that to the queue. Then we are going to search for LX panel. Add to Q, back. Oh, we could have hit main menu as well. Kind of wish I had done that. Uh, we go to our Q, then we can process and hit OK. And yes, start build. And it'll go ahead and build. It'll do one by one. It'll get those two dependencies built, and then it will build LX panel. Uh, one thing I really wish I should have mentioned, we're compiling this, so there's one way you can make your compiling go a little bit faster. So we'll su to root. I don't think... Yeah, that doesn't exist. touch slash etc slash make dot conf then open it up with your favorite text editor. Now, in caps you want make ops equals inside of quotes you want dash j and then the number of cores. I only have one allocated to the virtual machine so I'd put dash j too. It's one plus your number of cores. So if I were running this on my machine and it had all four cores I'd put dash j5. This allows hyper threading and it'll make your compiling go faster. Okay, and it asks us if we want to clear a build queue. I'm going to go ahead and do that. You can save build queue, so if you wanted to save it, let's say I had to reinstall Slackware, I could actually use saved build queues to just uh, rebuild everything from the Slack build, so that way I wouldn't have to one by one uh, build, rebuild the queue and install everything. It would be right there, just like bam, 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 install everything, and it would get everything back from Slack builds pretty quickly which is cool. Alright, now I'm going to install one more thing. I'm going to go back. I'm going to search for Terminator because I know this doesn't depend on anything else. I click OK and then I just go down to build and yes, if I just wanted to build one thing. No need for a queue for that. So we can install Flash, I think is a Slack build. If you install VLC, you should get your codex, but it has a long queue. A ton of stuff you need to install. So that's one thing that can be annoying about manual dependency, manual, uh, dependency resolution, is if you have to go and install a ton of files, which isn't too often. Uh, but you control what's on your system and what isn't, so you don't get a whole lot of gunk on the system. It stays nice and slim. It's very... It's pretty cool. And I know sometimes with apt it would have been nice to have control over dependencies because sometimes it likes to complain with dependencies and off. Oh, if only I could just tell it to ignore this, that, and the other or I don't want this package on the system. 
here we have absolute control over that. It's pretty nice. And I honestly don't find it to be that bad. I'm, I kind of don't care one way or the other with dependency resolution. But some Slackware users consider automatic resolution evil. Others don't like manually resolving anything, but give it a shot, you might like it. So that's it for this episode. Stay tuned for the next one. I will be showing you how to build a .tgz for Slackware. So let's say it's not in normal repos, it's not in Slackware, but we have we can find a source tarball, but we don't want to mess with make. I'll show you how to solve that problem.